Hello and welcome to another historic video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red storm deck which aims to cast enough spells in one turn to then win the game with a lethal grape shot. Now unlike the modern counterpart of storm we don't have a bunch of two mana ritual effects on arena that can generate mana to let us combo off. Instead we need to get there using a grinning ignus. This three mana creature is a 2-2, can pay red mana to return it to our hand and then add double colorless and a red mana to our mana pool. So the goal is is to discount the Grinning Ignis' casting cost using cards like Ruby Medallion giving red spells a 1 mana discount and there's also Hazard's Monument giving a red creature spells a 1 mana discount and whenever we cast a creature spell we can discard a card if we do draw a card which is also useful in assembling the combo. So let's say we have one of these effects on the battlefield. Now Grinning Ignis costs one and a red. We can cast it, pick it up, generate double colors and a red. Now what you'll notice is that we can generate a lot of mana that way, but we don't have enough red mana to sustainably keep going through this loop, which is why we need a card like Burgi, God of Storytelling, saying whenever we cast a spell, add a red mana, and until end of turn we don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So now if we have Burgi, a Grinning Ignis, and one of these discount effects, we can infinitely keep looping our Grinning Ignis. With Azred's Monument on the battlefield, it means we can now discard and draw through our entire deck until we find a copy of Grape Shot, and then with enough of a storm count, this will win us the game as we get to make a copy of the Grape Shot for every other spell we've cast, which also keeps track of every time we've replayed our Grinning Ignis. So that's the most straightforward way our deck can win. We could also technically get there without Burgi if we have a Runaway Steamkin on the battlefield instead, saying whenever we cast a red spell it picks up a plus one counter and we can remove three plus one counters from Steamkin to add a triple red to our mana pool. Now one Steamkin, one discount effect and a Grinning Ignis is still not enough to get there since we'll still be lacking a bit of mana, but with multiple discount effects or multiple Steamkins and an Ignis we could still potentially go infinite, so we don't absolutely need Burgi to win the game, which is great since that means there's more avenues to victory that can still set up lethal. And then rounding out the deck, we have some additional card draw effects to help find all these combo pieces. Faithless Looting can draw two and discard two and can also be flashed back for two and a red. So if we have double medallion in play, for instance, now it's only a single red mana to flash back looting. So that turns into a pretty nice card draw spell. Then at two mana, there's a Reckless Impulse and a Rent Resolve. These will exile the top two cards of our library and until our next turn, we may play those cards. So these are also very nice in combination with Ruby Medallion or Burgi, letting us cast multiple spells in the same turn. That way we don't risk exiling a bunch of cards that we're unable to cast in time. And then Amped Raptor can also be very nice for this deck. As a red creature, it still triggers our Hazard's Monument. And then if we exile another card that we can immediately cast, that can also potentially help us generate even more mana with Burgi or get more plus one counters on the Runaway Steamkin. Now you might be wondering what if we exile a three mana card with Amped Raptor, then we may be unable to cast it unless we we actually played Ether Hub, which is part of our mana base, generating one energy when it enters. That way we could potentially already cast a free three mana card of a turn two Amped Raptor, which is great. Now the one downside here to playing a Raptor in this deck is that we may exile it with another Raptor or with Impulse or Rens Resolve, and then if we cast it from exile it no longer will provide that extra card for us, but we'll still get two energy, which will help with future Amped Raptors. And then as we've said with Hazard's Monument, it's pretty easy to draw through the deck until we find a Grape Shot, but we're also playing all four copies, so we're pretty likely to draw one in the meantime, so we can also use it as removal to get rid of some problematic creatures, and if we need to cast multiple Grape Shots to win, that's also possible, especially with two copies of Pinnacle Monk in our mana base, can play this as a tap land or an untap land at the cost of three life, but then it's also a red creature that will return an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard to our hand, so that can also be a way to get back a Grape Shot for instance, and with a cost reduction from Monument and Medallion, it's still realistic to cast it. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Keeper. Probably turn one, play the Monk. Turn two, could decide between Raptor or Medallion first. And we're up against a Boros Energy. Alright, don't love uh, an unchecked Ocelot Pride on turn one. But I don't think we need to looting just yet. And I'll save myself the damage. So now I may be in favor of Raptor on two just to get a blocker out there. As our opponent does the same. 
and hits a Jani. That's a good one. So now if we were to trade for Ocelot, they transform a Jani, and they already have a red permanent in play. So yeah, this is kind of the worst case scenario. At least Etherhub powers up our Rapture, so we can maybe cast a free 3-drop. Alright, Grinning Ignis, I'll take it. Also note the Arena of Glory, which probably implies that they're playing Flage in their version, which could remove our stuff. So if I get the Ruby Medallion down, we can infinitely combo with Burgi and Ignis. But yeah, there's Flage, as we suspected, takes out Ignis. So now we need a replacement piece. And I can't even block any of the opponent's cats. Can't trade for Raptor, however. So now what? Could go Medallion into Grape Shots to at the very least clear a Jani. Could go Medallion into another Raptor. And then if we get lucky, we hit another Grape Shot. So I can clear a Jani and the Ocelot. Alright, well, that's why we play the game. So I target Ocelot first, since that will resolve last. And then a Jani twice. Okay, well, we did get a lucky hit. Now the board looks a bit more manageable. And then we can deploy Burgi, use looting to maybe try and find another copy of uh, Grinning Ignis. Put our opponent back on the board with Guide into Rapture. And they hit removal for my Raptor, not the end of the world. But they'll have some leftover energy to sink into the guide's ability. So they have a very fast clock here. And also a pretty full graveyard, so they're not too far from escaping Flage potentially with haste, thanks to the arena. So not loving my chances. So it's gotta be Burgi, step one. And then looting. And we found an Ignus. Do we just win here? Discard Impulse lands. Haven't made land drop for the turn yet. So we can play Ignus, make a mana, pick up Ignus, rinse and repeat. And we have the lethal grape shot in hand already. Wow. Well, this was a pretty epic battle. Needed all the luck on our side we could get. Our opponent had a very good draw as well. But yeah, it came down to the very last card. Just need a storm count of 24. Wish I could show my opponent the grape shot. So they know what's happening, but they'll find out soon enough. And as far as infinite combos on Arena are concerned, with the current board state it doesn't take too many clicks to win the game. Since there's no Steamkin to give extra counters to, there's no Soul Sister effect to gaining the opponent life that we have to click through. So it's smooth sailing. Alright, Storm Count 20. Need a little bit more because of their Guide of Souls and Flage. And one more. Could technically flashback looting if we didn't have a grape shot in hand yet to maybe draw one. Target the opponent's face 24 times and then watch as the grape shots resolve. Alright, and now sit back, relax, and watch the fireworks.
Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, sign me up. We have Burgi and Grinning Ignis, plus double Raptor with an Ether Hub. So those can potentially provide a lot of value. Just missing a medallion or a monument to give us that discount. Opponent countering their own Lotus Field trigger with Consigned to Memory, a new Stifle. So, yeah, opponent has got a lot of mana next turn. And they're likely on the Jeskai Flage build with Null Drifter as well. I'll cast my free Rents Resolve, finding Burgi in exile. Alright, we'll uh, hit for two. And play Burgi. Even though I have two more in hand, it is a key card that our opponent might try to fight over. And that's also easily removed by Flage. Opponent's gonna Helix it. See, so yeah, against Jeskai Control, it's gonna be difficult to get all our combo pieces in play, especially when they might be playing the Wrath, which also hits artifacts. So this seems like a difficult matchup. Okay, maybe go Rents Resolve to try and hit our Land Drop for a turn. And then play Raptor. Before our opponent finds a strict Proctor to stop our ETB effects. That opponent's gonna just counter the trigger, fair enough. And discharge a Raptor. Our opponent is down to two cards in hand, that's the good news. Now Teferi, making more mana. Can attack Teferi. And then for now probably just go Impulse and another Raptor. Found Ignus and Grape Shots. Currently Grape Shot would not be enough to finish off Teferi. Steamkin was also an option before we cast Impulse, but Raptor's more likely to be a nice two for one here since we have the spare energy. Another impulse. And can play the land. Alright, next turn we can try and cast some things out of exile. Opponent just with another lightning helix. Teferi might now go digging. Opponent's got enough mana to hard cast an old drifter. And there's a proctor. So luckily Burgi triggers on cast. So maybe it's not quite the disaster I imagined. So can I somehow just combo off this turn? If I play Ruby Mandalion, Burgi cost 2 mana, then I'll still be a little bit short, unless Impulse hits a land maybe. Right, let's try this. Playing Steamkin first doesn't really do it for me, but I can play it after playing Burgi. Since it replaces the mana. But I guess, let's see, this is also on cast, so that's still good to go. Alright, so we might still be in business, so we'll Impulse. That's also free between Burgi and Medallion. Hit a land, and then Monument. Never mind, Monument is also on cast and not on ETB. So if I were to play Ignis... We get some more mana. Can use the mana to pick up Ignis. Rinse and repeat, and then we can just Grape Shot for the win. Alright, so I guess Strict Proctor wasn't really a concern after all. Alright, so managed to combo off despite a lot of interaction from our opponent. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Ruby Medallion double Ignis, so that's a decent starting point. And then Impulse for card advantage. Opponent on what seems to be the Charbelcher deck, so it's just a pure race. And yeah, opponent can potentially win next turn already with a perfect draw. So not loving my chances. A 
untapped lanes. Do they have iron crank feet into Charbelcher? They don't. All right, so Pono could be keeping up some removal here. Maybe go Steamkin into Impulse, hope to hit a land, and then still play Rapture. Need to get a little bit lucky. So going for Impulse before Rapture. All right, found an Ether Hub, although we'll have to use the energy to cast a Rapture, so I can't get a free 3-drop. Could also pass or play another Steamkin. But if Rapture hits another 1 or 2-drop, then Steamkin also gets to uh, make mana for us this turn. All right, hit another Rapture, so that's more energy. And then now we can use Steamkin to probably play another Steamkin and then play Ignis. Is that the best we can do if I play Ignis and pick it up? We have three mana floating again, but it's only going to be single red. But then I guess we get an extra Steamkin counter. Still probably better to just go Steamkin plus Ignis. And I hope they don't have a board wipe next turn, I guess. Right, opponent with an Awakening to improve their hand. And they got rid of a lot of cards, but they kept one, which is maybe a Char Belcher or Iron Crank Feet. So could be that next turn. Let's find out. If they just cast a Char Belcher, we still have a turn. But nope, Iron Crank Feet into Charbel to activate his game. All right, that's too bad. Had a decent chance of comboing next turn onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a one lander, but we do have Faithless looting facing Halorus, so likely an energy deck. Yeah, this one's close. I guess we'll try it and then hope looting finds a second land and then double Raptor could provide a nice bit of value. Did not find a land. So Impulse and Resolve can go. Keep another looting to try again next turn to hit our land drop. All right, we found a land and it's even an Ether Hub. So now we could potentially cast a 3 drop of Amped Raptor's ability. And we hit a monument. Perfect. So that was a great turn for us. We already have a Burgi in hand, so we're just missing Grinning Ignus now. Opponent hitting double Amped Raptor, although the second one doesn't uh, get to cast anything for free. Okay, so step one might be Burgi. Trigger Monument, and then I think Looting can go. Even though it digs pretty deep, it is still card disadvantage in a way. And then Raptor can get rid of an Impulse and hit another Looting. And Raptor finds another Monument, which we cannot cast since we don't have the energy for it. So I could still cast a Looting. Sure. And then we'll keep the Impulse. So we've got triple Looting in the Graveyard at least. And next turn, Impulse needs to try and find Grinning Ignis and hoping Burgi doesn't get removed here. Soul Warden's acceptable. And now Ocelot Pride is going to start going wide. So next turn, they'll have the City's Blessing enabled. Okay, for now, could go Ruby Medallion into Reckless Impulse. And then Medallion makes it easier to flashback looting going forward. And Ignis, alright. So with Ignis we have infinites, but we don't have a card in hand left to actually find the Grape Shot and cast it. But I'll still put Ignis on the battlefield, I think. And 
then no point in flashing back looting when empty handed. But now we're in great shape to win next turn since we can just go through the entire deck until we find a grape shot. I guess Soul Warden will need to be answered first because our opponent gains life when we replay Grinning Ignis. So I do need to find multiple copies of Grape Shot potentially. This attack is just to transform a Jani. We'll take it since we don't want to lose any of our creatures. Opponent already has a red permanent to enable a Jani. Alright, so if I start storming off here, opponent gains two with each iteration of the loop. But then at some point we'll find Grape Shots, which can at the very least Wrath the opponent's board, which I guess for now is good enough. So we'll start comboing here. But yeah, Soul Warden makes things a little bit more annoying. There's a Grape Shot already. So I don't need to keep discarding and drawing necessarily. Just need to increase our storm count. So if I were to cast Grape Shot now, it would already be enough to clear a Jani double Soul Warden. But I think we want to clear the opponent's entire board if possible. Now we do have to be careful with how we actually resolve the Grape Shot, making sure to take out a Jani first and then all the cats. Otherwise they still get the Ajani Planeswalker, but I guess we could attack it as well. So we can see the storm count on Grape Shot itself. And we can quickly do the math here to see how many copies we need to wrath the opponent's board. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13 it seems. Oh, looks like I skipped two attackers. We'll just keep going second main, but now I missed out on an attack step. See, so yeah, we need to get to up to a 13 at least. If I go further than necessary, then our opponent just gains more life with Soul Warden. So we want to Avoid that situation. Yeah, this would be a little easier without all the Soul Warden triggers. Alright, so one more iteration should do it. Cast a Grape Shot, and then the first one I target is the last to resolve. So... We targeted that cat, now this one. Alright, that was a beautiful Grape Shot. Sadly, I skipped my attack step, so I don't get to hit them for a little bit here. But it uh, doesn't matter, since next turn we would just go through the combo again until we find another Grape Shot and then burn the opponent out onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Yorion as companion. Don't see that every day, so likely control. 
Well, we have Bergy, Ignis, Grape Shots, so we're pretty close to having all the pieces we need. But we can expect some interaction. Ren's Resolve gives us a bit of card advantage. Opponent Black White could be a Doom Foretold deck for all we know. And next turn we can go Land Monument. Would be nice to keep the monument around since that we can use with Ignis and Burgi to combo. But they might have answers to non creature permanence. A relic we don't really care about. Can exile our graveyard all you want. Eh, gotta play monument while we can. But I'm not counting on it uh, surviving here. Rest in peace, more graveyard hate. That's fine. And our opponent draws with a relic. Okay, so we've got a pretty decent shot here. Can play Burgi into Ignus, make a mana, pick up Ignus, and then we should be off to the races with the grape shots to close it out. And then we can start discarding if we'd like, but my hand's pretty good as is. So don't really have to use the monuments. And yeah, we should just have it here. Doesn't look like our opponent has any irrelevant interaction. There's not too many free spells in Historic compared to Timeless that you have to worry about. Would be a different story if our opponent could flash in a Solitude. But we already have the Grape Shot in hand, so it's just a matter of replaying Ignis to build up our Storm Count. And then Grape Shot for 20 damage will do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And uh, sure, we'll try this. We have two ways to discount our red spells. Steamkin to make more mana. And then Monument, a way to cycle through the deck as well. Probably gonna play the Monk as a land, turn one. Even though it is a way to eventually get back a Grape Shot. That seems pretty far off. Opponent Blue Red with Soulscar Mage, so Wizards. That's gonna be a tough matchup. An aggressive deck that also has creature removal as a bad combo for us. And they even have Flame of Honor to blow up our artifacts. So yeah, I think the Wizards matchup is probably the worst one we can get. So my Steamkin's unlikely to survive, so we'll play the Medallion. Opponent with now a Symmetry Sage and a Lightning going upstairs. So, yeah, opponent's putting the pedal to the metal. We're at 9, could easily die next turn, and we're not really close to comboing. So, could play Steamkin into another Steamkin, and then Grape Shot dealing 3 damage. That's maybe the best I've got. And then, what do we take out? Symmetry Sage versus Balmor. Probably Balmor. Would have been nicer to deploy the Monument first, so we could start discarding and drawing when casting our creatures. But I don't think we had that luxury. Opponent points discharge at our face. Can uh, try to double block the soul scar or single block it. If they have another burn spell, we're dead anyway. So trying to think if there's any benefits to double blocking, probably not. Right, opponent's got to consider. All right, in that case, a double block might have worked out better, but then we also would have lost both steamkins. So now, just gotta hope our opponent's hand is all lanes, but even have the a land they can sacrifice to draw. So, yeah, I don't see a way out here. Play Monuments, and then any spell to trigger Symmetry Sage is lethal. So even had we double blocked last turn to trade for Soul Scar, Symmetry Sage still crosses the finish line. Alright, GG's.
As we said, a pretty rough matchup, so don't expect to win this one very often. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Got our two cost reduction effects, and then runs resolve for card advantage, hopefully finding cards like Burgi and Grinning Ignis. Facing turn one forest and pilgrim, so creature deck. Start with a medallion, and then we could play the steamkin and runs resolve next turn. A rope line attendant. So this might be a Yawgmoth kind of combo creature deck. Now another Steamkin. Somewhat tempting to play the Monument first, hoping they don't have Haywire Might to blow it up. And then next turn one playing Steamkins I get to discard and draw. Although honestly all my cards are pretty good right now. So I'm not hating on Steamkin. Do we play another Steamkin or do we maybe double Rents Resolve? The extra mana could come in handy. So let's go double Steamkin and then Rens Resolve. We wouldn't be able to cast anything else, but then next turn we'll have plenty of mana moving into our turn. A young Wolf making an extra 1 1 token. So if they have Yawgmoth here, they'll be able to do some pretty scary things. Knight Errant, a great way to find it. Find the Gilded Goose Innkeeper. And another monument to draw. Alright, so step one might be Rent's Resolve to trigger Steamkin, and then make us some more mana, and then hopefully Monument can be put to use. Found Ignis and another Impulse. So make mana, cast Monument, which means we can play Ignis for one mana. Have another Monument I can discard. And then I'll wait on playing the Mountain in case we draw Ether Hub and we somehow need the energy. So discard and draw. Found Ether Hub, but it's not an exile, so probably still end up discarding it to the Monument. And then now we need a good Impulse to hopefully find some goodies. A land and another Ignis. Okay. So can play the Ignis, discard Ether Hub, and I mean we should have it here. We don't need Burgi with double Steamkin and double cost reduction. We can just keep going until we find a Grape Shot. And then uh, burn the opponent out basically. Important to keep a card in hand to discard to the monument, so maybe I'll play the mountain here so I can mess up by playing my land. But yeah, opponent sees what's happening and concedes. Infinite storm count, infinite mana if we want it, and then uh, at some point grape shot to win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, I think. Double raptor, one gets to take advantage of ether hub to maybe cast a three drop on turn two. Opponent's on a blue deck, not sure which variety. And then we already have Burgi and Grape Shot, so Grinning Ignis might be the missing piece. And let's give Amter Raptor a try. And we had a Ruby Medallion, pretty good. So next turn we could play Burgi into Raptor and then still cast more spells afterwards. Opponents seeking new knowledge. So definitely strikes me like a combo deck. And Glasspool Mimic, so it could be the one trying to copy the same creature a bunch of times. Now Innkeeper. So I'm not exactly sure what to make of it yet, but some sort of creature combo deck. So speed is of the essence. So I think step one Burgi into another Raptor with that spare energy. And then we'll be able to impulse at the very least. 
Getting to cast two spells here will also nut us an extra energy, and we found a Hazorat's Monument, that's perfect. So now I don't need to cast it from hand. So yeah, we're just a grinning Ignis away from comboing. Found a Steamkin. Discard Monument to the Monument, or we could discard a land for now, in case they have an answer to it. And then cast Medallion, still make a mana with Burgi, although I don't get to uh, discard and draw since it's not a creature. So the question now, do we Grape Shot just to deal a bunch of damage? I think it's reasonable, because if we find Grinning Ignis we can still combo and find another Grape Shot. So one can target the Innkeeper, might also be part of their combo, so removing it makes sense. And it's a pretty healthy grape shot here. And hit you for two. So our opponent's at ten. The backup plan is attacking with our creatures. If we draw another Burgi, we can also play the Horn of Bounty now. Thanks to double medallion, it's pretty cheap to cast. Alright, never mind. Opponent might just kill us here with Seagate Stormcaller into Neoform. That's the classic combo. Yep. Alright, so opponent gets to get a dual caster mage, which can now copy the Neoform that's still on the stack. This is one of the old school historic combos. All it takes is instant speed removal to potentially disrupt the combo, but our deck only removes stuff at sorcery speed. And uh, that's where Glasspool Mimic will come in handy. They can get Glasspool Mimic to copy Dual Caster Mage to keep this going, and then at some point give their team haste. Now with three blockers, there's a chance we still have enough to survive. Recruiter giving everything haste. I guess double recruiter is going to be a little bit too much for us to handle. So we've got three blockers, still take at least uh, 20 damage. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Halurus, so likely energy. And we have two lands, medallion, no ether hub for the raptor, but... Yeah, I'll still give it a try. And then we could looting on one, but we don't exactly know what we're looking for with a looting. I mean, Burgi would be fine, I guess. I see. Opponent on a hammer deck instead, so not your typical uh, Boros energy. So if I want to stop the opponent from hitting me, I would have to maybe just grape shot the Gavalier. Otherwise they could figure out a way to put a hammer on the Gavalier next turn already, and then it's too late. Even the first striker won't be able to get in the way. So it's pretty drastic to Grape Shot here, but maybe it's the right move if they kept a very specific hand. And typically they'll keep hands that are able to cheat a hammer into play. So I think we got a Grape Shot. And hopefully they don't just play another creature next turn. And then with a land, I could go Medallion into Raptor, for instance. The Gavalier also having Trample makes it better in the face of a Raptor, whereas a Raptor can still maybe chum block their other creatures that don't have Trample. And now Fighter Class. Alright, so they could still technically attack us with a creature equipped by Hammer, since there's the uh, one mana Goblin that gains haste when equipped. And our opponent fetched up Colossus Hammer. So. Could Medallion, could play Raptor, Impulse could maybe hit a land drop for a turn. Got a couple options. Kind of liking the Medallion. And then next turn we can hopefully do multiple things. Alright, it's gonna be a Canvas Outfitter to discount the equip cost on Colossus Hammer. And a Sigardus Aid to play Hammer at instant speed as well. So we'll need to get our blocker down. And our opponent plays Hammer right now to maybe play around a burn spell. Okay, so step one, 
might still be to impulse or resolve. That way if I find an ether hub, Amped Raptor could maybe cast a 3-drop as well. And it's always good to hit our land drop. Now I guess if I play the Raptor I could also hit one of these effects. And then if I find a land I can play Ignis. So maybe playing Raptor first is still fine. Just hope we don't hit a 3-drop. Uh, we hit an Impulse. And still no land. So now we want to either looting from Exile or just Impulse or Resolve. It's probably fine. They both dig two cards deep. And then hopefully we can still play the Raptor afterwards, although that one's not going to provide any value since we're playing it from Exile. I right, found an Aether Hub. So Raptor's going to be chomping next turn. Maybe at this point I just play Looting to try and hit my land drop for next turn. And then we can maybe go Monument into Raptor, which can then also discard and draw with a Monument out, which is better. Alright, so Looting. Do we keep double Ignis? Probably only need one of them. Pass a turn. This turn we can chump if we get the chance. They might also have Shadow Spear to give Trample in the future, so I'll chump while I can. Opponent puts Lurus in hand, which can then get back Gavalier. And we drew Monuments, but I can just play the one from Exile. And then now I could also play Ignis, but then I'm not going to have any mana to activate it, so I think Raptor makes more sense if we're chumping. Discard the Monument. And then at least we have some energy for future Raptors. So once again, happy to chump. Opponent could also have a Fling effect in hand to sack their creature, so if we take 12 they could deal another 12. And the green mana is likely for the uh, Belt of Giant Strength, I believe it's called. Another powerful equipment. So there's Lurus, get back Avalir. And then next turn they can attack with Trample. Alright, so kinda need to make things happen now. Can play Ignis, trigger Monuments, and discard another Monument, since it's legendary. Can Impulse, see what we hit. Land, land. Play one, and then at this point maybe cast Looting instead of Flashback, just to save on mana. Steamkin. Gets another trigger from Monuments. Discard and draw. And we found Burgi. So now what? If I cast Burgi, I'm out of mana. If I pick up Ignis, I can play Burgi, but I'm also going to be out of red mana. So what makes more sense? I guess just cast Burgi, and then Steamkin is fine to chump. We'll at least have a counter, so it can also block a uh, Trampler to soak up a bit more damage. Because if I pick up Ignis, I get two Colos and a red. Can replay Ignis, but then I'm out of red mana. So that doesn't accomplish all that much. Could also keep Burgi a surprise, I suppose. But uh, yeah, let's just cast it. Alright, so next turn, if they don't kill me or remove any of my permanents, we would have enough to combo off. Shadow Spear for Trample is not ideal. So yeah, the Steamkin is fine to block if necessary. But now if our opponent has a Fling effect, I think we're just dead. So just Outfit or Attacking. If I throw Steamkin in front, we still take 11 plus another 13, and I can't afford to block with anything else. So then I may as well take it. Now let's find out if we're dead. They can move some equipment around, that's fine. Alright, we might still be in the game. Get to untap, and yeah, let's combo. 
pick up Ignis, cast it, trigger Monument. And yeah, opponent sees what's happening and concedes. At some point we'll have all the mana we need, all the storm count we need, and grape shot for the win. Alright, so we got to see our Ruby Storm deck in action, and it certainly exceeded my expectations. Got to showcase some wins against Boros Energy and some turn 4 wins as well. Technically capable of winning on turn 3 if we get incredibly lucky off a of turn 2 Amped Raptor, but I think turn 4 is more realistic. So it's not going to be competing as the fastest combo deck in the format. That title probably goes to decks like Charbelcher or the Sphinx Reanimator deck, which can already win on turn 2. But unlike those decks, there's more permutations that let us go infinite. We don't specifically need one or two cards to win the game. So that means that the deck is overall going to have more lines that lead to a victory and overall should increase the consistency a little bit, even though it means that the deck may not be as explosive as some of the other combo decks in the format, but it's always fun to cast a lot of red spells in the same turn. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.